Hello my loves, I'm Ellie Frost. Thank you so much for being here, for supporting my channel, for plugging in, being with your energy, um, feeling the vibes, commenting, liking, sharing, subscribing, and being on this collective journey of rapid transformation out of narcissistic abuse cycles into a spiritual awakening and our most abundant and fully alive lives, right? As strange and as extreme as that may sound, if you're really going through it right now, it's possible for you, right? To live your best life now. So, or at least be on the, <laughs> on a completely different trajectory towards it. The narcissist is the ultimate predator, the ultimate predator. And I'll talk to you about how they trap you. What was most outstanding to me in the most, not in a good way, was, I mean, in some ways, going through some of these lessons is kind of good, right? Because I had been very successful for a lot of my life. And then I went through the absolute opposite of that. And I guess this time round, I'm not letting people in my life who haven't got shared values and who are, I'll know for, for, straight away now who's just there because I'm successful and who who is the type of person that will kick you when you're down. But what I found extraordinary about going through poverty, sickness, going without, humiliation, bullying, like the, the worst times of my life was how many predators there were to pillage from the wreckage that at that time in my life, I didn't have anyone um, who was truly compassionate to me, who... I mean, I couldn't believe that. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it because I'd been, you know, a compassionate, kind person. But what I hadn't been was discerning. What I had been was in narcissistic, abusive cycles. In fact, during my successful years, which was the majority of my life up until the last, well, up until six years ago, um, I guess I thought it didn't matter because I guess although they were doing damage to me psychologically, emotionally and spiritually, I I wasn't in dire straits to see how ruthless and vicious and just brutal they were. I was being brutally abused uh, by my parents, I guess, but it, I hadn't, it, it, I still had quite a lot of cognitive dissonance around that. But to see like people laughing in your face at your downfall when you've actually been a really kind person to them and you know, it was just, the things that go on here are very unjust and it's hard, isn't it? Because a lot of us, I teach about this, get caught in the trap of injustice. And that's one of the traumas to deal with because like we have to heal the trauma of injustice because it is so unjust, right? It doesn't make any sense. It is morally corrupt, um, humanly corrupt. It's against humanity on every level and it can try and break your soul, Yeah. There's a song that I share in Sovereign and we, that song we do some of the exercises to is you won't break my soul, you won't break my soul. And that's the truth. They try and break your soul. But what I had to know was that's not a reflection of the human race, right? That I had actually, I'd allowed myself to have the worst kind of people around me, which again, this time round, <laughs> there's none of them will be around me. There will be none of them around me. There aren't any narcissists in my life. And as I keep and continue into my abundance and impact on the planet, there's no way there's going to be any of them um, around me because that is a limitation and that is me fueling the wrong side, the dark side. So I had some very hard spiritual lessons to learn in this. But at the same time, you know, for most people, you find out, they say like you find out who people are at certain times in your life, right? Narcissists really do show you who they are from the onset. It just doesn't cost you your life or doesn't cost you as much at the beginning. So we think, we take, we don't realise how serious it is, right? If we've grown up in abuse cycles like I did, your brain gets comfortable with those types of people. So although they're fundamentally unsafe, the brain goes familiar. Your brain loves what's familiar and hates um, what's unfamiliar. So when we ever do any transformational change, the brain can reject it, even though in your soul, you know, yeah, I want to do this work. I want to go forward. or I want to take that big leap or I want to go on that day or, you know, I'm ready for going to the gym or whatever. Your brain doesn't like to be outside its comfort zone. So in all transformation, there's some resistance in the brain. Yeah. And if people talked a bit about sabotage, I'll teach you all about, I've done personal development for years. So like resistance comes up when, 
It's like the old you pushing up against the new you. The brain loves what's familiar and healthy feels uncomfortable when you've been used to unhealthy for a long time and sabotage is when your identity is still stuck to the old identity so we sabotage our success i.e go back to the narcissist or do something to sabotage our no our no contact or our new life partly there's a lot of layers to that part of it is the fear part of it is the emotional crash after we leave it's like huge withdrawal symptoms and part of it is our identity is still stuck yeah to the old identity, we haven't developed our new personal identity, yeah? Which we have to do to build a new life because we've identified with who we've become in this abuse cycle. They are the ultimate predators. They know who to target. They know who's the em who's empathetic, compassionate. They can see that, because again, it's an entity of consciousness they're plugged into. Now, love on one level is an entity of consciousness. So when I'm tuned into the vibration, the frequency of love, my awareness is open to all feelings, ideas, and concepts around it. The narcissistic consciousness is a very limited one. But when they're plugged into it, then they get the intelligence of that consciousness available to them. And some of that is psychic telepathic ability and they can literally sense your unmet needs your unmet need as a child and the unmet needs right now so if you're someone who is really feeling a lack of love in the world yeah they will present that they're the one and they're always ready to pounce they seem like they're patient and they're waiting for you especially if you've got romantic involved you might think oh but he was waiting for me he was trying to get me they're not patient at all they're predators that have an enormous web of supply which means that you're not the only one no matter how desperate they seem no matter how intense they seem they've always got other targets other victims in their web so they're not being patient they're just being fed elsewhere ready to pounce at the minute you'll give them um something that you're weak yeah, because if you've been resisting one for a while, it's when you're weak. If you've felt off around certain people, but you're going through a hard time, and you just need someone to talk to and they're there, you're going to give in. If you need help and there's no one to help you and they happen to be the one around, even though you know they felt off, you'll, um, that will be it, their entry point. And once they get in, they can, they'll literally be very fast to take over your life in some way, even as a friend, you know, they'll move very fast to try and ambush you. So you don't have time to think they can get you into nervous system dysregulation, start coming into your life. If it's a friend, sometimes stealing your identity or trying to project their like you, um, pillaging your resources and making very fast moves, very fast moves to get you caught up with them. And then to put you in some kind of trap in some way, emotionally, could be financially. They'll, they'll try and hook you any way they can as fast as possible, especially at a time when you can't think straight and you're in distress and looking for comfort. Yeah. And if you've been used to abusers, your brain, when you're feeling out of sorts, will go back to what's comfortable and familiar, which could be abusive people or you might just have no one. And of course, they're the predator that's always on the sidelines ready to talk ready to be the one knowing that like a disgusting vile vulture they're going to swoop in and pick up the remains of whatever's left and pillage whatever they can from you that's the narcissist it's um everything they do strategic this is why you can never get your head right you'll never outsmart them you'll never be on top of it because when you're at when you're an authentic person you, you don't really have agendas for much you might have expectations and i do teach in personal development how we manage our expectations of other people and we have to communicate them because it's not fair a lot of us are having relationships with people where we've got an idea of what it should be they've got an idea of what it should be and no one's really joined in consent on it so we've got to learn a few skills here but the narcissist is a strategic a strategist it's hard to imagine every time that they ha i mean it's impossible to imagine I know so much about it. I've taught on it. I, I, I've healed people from it. I've helped them heal from it uh, for years now, right? And I've been for a ton of it. But the amount of strategy that goes behind their infrastructures with their flying monkeys and stuff like that, they do it automatically because they're, it's not because they're so smart. They're just tuned into that consciousness and it gives them intelligence. It's a limited consciousness, which is why they only do the same things over and over again. But it is it has certain things to it like the infrastructure they know how to set up the allies and the flying monkeys and the you know assistance and stuff the allies 
but it is limited, which is why it's so obvious when you see it. They do the same thing. They even have the same smirk. They have the same stare. They know the, 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 it does the same thing. Now, love is a very expansive consciousness. Love is more than just, you know, love is a feeling. Love is many things, but it is also in consciousness, a frequency. And when we're um, tuned into that, it's so expansive. It's not limited like the narcissistic consciousness. So it's very, very limited. It's very, very predictable, but it's extremely strategic in how they behave. They are extracting information to use against you. They are playing on your emotions. It is a game you'll never be able to play because you'd never, you could never be that devoid of emotional capacity and totally cold and totally strategic in how you deal with a human being. It is absolutely the devil's work. It is not of God. It's not of good. It is uh, exploitation, manipulation to the highest degree, tuned into an intelligence, a consciousness that is helping them play that game. Um, so everything strategic. It's so weird to think about. Even the love bombing stage, all strategic. Yeah, they know how to hook you. They know what to present to you. And they are the ones ready to swoop in when you're weak, which is why sovereignty. If you can come into sovereignty, I've got it open i'm supporting it to april 17 i am going to shut the doors on that at some point to let people in i do it i don't know when it's going to run again um it's not a big investment you know i, I talked about when i had i know what it's like to have nothing and when i had nothing i'm not saying you have to invest in this but like there comes a cho point where you choose your growth there comes a point where no matter what you make it work i made it work in absolute dire straits so i'm not saying you have to do that you will heal here no matter what but like there is something in our energy where we decide, where we make a different decision and we have to put, We ha there is something energetically in that as well, where we put our resources in. Not saying you have to do it in that particular thing, but it's available to you. I don't, it won't be open. I, I follow what I get called to do. And at the moment, I'm considering what's best to do because... I want to do things for the wider good that are accessible for more people, which means that <clears throat> I can't have a diary full of one-on-one -on -one single session so I'm not taking any single sessions because I've got other things I do in the world as well um and I'm thinking about how to help the collective most which one is prioritizing free content so you get this work two is what are the best things but I can only I have to honor my own capacity and my own guidance and my own health and well-being while I do things so when I offer something I don't know when it'll be available again if you can make it make it because my, the people are quite shocked sometimes in my world that things do change and they do change quite fast with me because I offer something it's the best I've got but it doesn't <laughs> they don't last forever I don't know when the next thing will be so if you like something I'd jump on it and I do have self-study courses on my website but <laughs> that's the only one on this in particular okay my loves keep commenting please like please share please subscribe any questions let me know uh, lots of love and i'll speak to you soon